everyone welcome to my channel this is Amy thanks so much for stopping by today I'm going to show you how I paint a flower arrangement on this green gloss bottle I am going to be using 3A magic paint brushes and like I said they're getting so painted up it's kind of hard to see this is a number 10 a number 12 and then this one is a four so they're all flat brushes and then I'm going to be using a clay ball maker to make a make the center dots for each flower paint I'm using today is Thick It all of its folk art paint mixture of enamels and multi-surface skull bus yellow wicker white magenta forest moss and berry wine. Now I have cleaned the bottle. The important thing when you're doing glass painting is to make sure you use soap and water on your bottle and then you go over it with rubbing alcohol just to make sure that you get all the dust and grime off of it before you start painting. Also one thing to keep in mind is the thicker that you put your paint on, I mean not so thickly that it actually bubbles when you bake it, but uh, just to get a good coverage, good opaque coverage, the more durable your design is going to be. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. First of all, I'm going to, and I apologize, I don't have a whole lot of space with the way my camera is set up right now to show you every time I load my brush, but I'm just, I'm not real particular about it. I just dip my brush into each side, do some blending strokes, if I want to add white to it, then I just tip it into another color and go on. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and start right now just by doing a few initial leaves before I start painting my actual design. And I'm using the forest moss and the thicket with a little bit of white. Alright, so I'm going to go down this and do these little leaves as I go. Now I always do my design on paper before I put it on my project so sometimes I have to adjust the size or the placement based on what it is I'm actually painting on. Because obviously my paper is bigger than my surface on this one for sure. Now when you're doing like wiggle strokes you kind of have to keep an eye on when you're wiggling that you're not pulling the paint back up like here you know sometimes that'll actually cause there to be a separation in the paint so keep that in mind and then I'm going to put another one down here alright so then my next step I am going to hit it with a heat gun so that when I go to start painting on top of it a little bit, it doesn't uh, mix with the paint too much, hopefully. Now once you hit it with a heat gun or a hair dryer to give it some drying uh, time, it still is going to be wet, so you still have the, the possibility of pulling in some of the underneath color or pulling it up. When you're painting on glass, you have to really understand that it's different, so much different than painting on uh, paper or canvas. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and dip in here. Now if you see this white floaty stuff on here, because I know sometimes people mention, what is that? It's a flow medium I've used to help flow on the paper, but it's actually for gloss as well. And it's just still on my plate from when I did my initial design. Alright, so I'm going to come up here, I'm going to do a bud, and keep in mind with this, you know, certain colors will show more opaqueness than others, and so you just got to make sure that you apply the paint in a manner, I'll probably end up going back over it, just to make sure, and it could be too that I have, because I have some of this flow medium on here that it's doing that. Because normally when you add white into the mix, it helps tremendously. But sometimes you just kind of have to just be patient, pull it in. 
and like I said, I might have to go back over it here just to get it to look the way I want it to look, but we'll see. All right, I'm going to keep going here on this. If you have any questions or comments down below underneath my video, any of the products that I'm showing you on here, I try to put an affiliate link in my or in the section underneath the video so that you oops see that's way too it is kind of interfering, making it too I didn't want to get didn't want to get rid of my paint because I really don't know, need this flow medium so much right now. So that's why it's still on my plate, but it's kind of interfering. All right, so I'm going to keep going here. And I'm just going to, because I can do more of a rounded type petal, I kind of like to go up and down. I'm probably going to end up having to go over this. This is where you just have to learn how to just keep painting no matter what you're being challenged with and learn how to just make it work. And then what I like to do, a lot of times I like to go with then reversing the colors so that the bottom part is not the same as the top. Okay, anyway, so sometimes if you want to like go say the lighter on here and then turn your brush and come back, you can do that too. And that just kind of gives a little bit more interest to your design by switching the colors around a little bit. Uh, but you, and you don't have to do that. If you, you know, like it, just all the colors being the same brush just has so much of that flow medium in it. It's nice because it makes it flow nicely, but it's kind of hard. I guess then I didn't really want to ruin my, or get rid of all my paint. It's the problem. And then I'm going to turn it. Once again, and just take your time. This is this is meant to be relaxing, not something that gets you uptight. It's meant to be something fun, and you're creating something pretty for your home. And that's kind of how I look at it, at least. Like I said, we'll just keep working with it. Like I said, you can just touch. And if you don't like that look, then, then let it dry and go back over it. So you let it give it some dry time. and Now, when you're done painting, allow your item to air dry for at least an hour before you bake it. When you're baking, make sure that you place it in a cold oven. Do not turn the oven on and preheat it and then stick your glass in it. You preheat it with your glass already in it. So you want the oven to be cold. And this is very important. What, what will cause your glass to break is sudden change in temperature. So keep that in mind. What I'm telling you is very, very important. And then once you've preheated your oven, you add the preheat time to the bake time. So say the paint that you're using says 30 minutes, which is what the folk art paint mentions. Then you add that to your preheat time. Once your oven, you know, is finished baking and 
and you turn it off, then just let, let it cool completely before you pull your items out. Again, the importance of this is to keep your glass from experiencing sudden change in temperature because when you do that, once again, that causes it, uh, or, or not, it might not break, but you're, you're at risk of it breaking. And you don't want that. If you've worked really hard on a project, you don't want it to break. I mean, you don't. You know that. All right, so let me do something here. I'm going to hit it again with the heat gun, and I'll be right back. All right, so I went ahead, gave it some dry time, and then I went back over each of the petals just to make them a little thicker, kind of fill them in some. And I think you know it looks so much better once you do that because it's it's a nice thicker coat of paint. All right, so the next thing that I'm going to do is to take my little brush, if I can figure out what in the world I did with it. All right, and I'm going to start working on the rest of the greenery. All right, so I'm sticking it in a little stiff here. Maybe I'll add a little bit of that low medium to it. Anyhow, I'm going to stick it in here and then just start adding, adding more to it. I am, of course, going to do some little stems and, and whatnot. I'm going to do some little sprays that come out away from the design. Sorry, just hit the camera with my long brush. I'm getting adjusted to the long handles, but sometimes they're a little, they get in the way. I really like the shorter handled brushes better, but what are you going to do? For the price of these, and really for being cheap brushes, yeah, I like how they handle. Now, I've, I don't think I mentioned this when I was um, showing the products that I'm using, but I do try to do affiliate links down below my videos. So if you're interested in anything that I'm working with or using that you could possibly purchase through those links, So check those out down below the video. And with these, I'm just using a combination of the different, the different greens and white. And let's see, let's come out here a little bit. I'm going to come down here because I'm not going to actually do a stem. That's not going to be a stem, just so that you're, you're aware. It's going to be. I mean, you can put like little filler leaves in between these if you want. Like that. Again, when you do this, you know, it's more in line with, you know, when you make a bouquet, not everything is all separated and perfect. It is on top of each other or you know, layered, that kind of thing. So that's, you know, why I like to, to lay them on top of each other as far as leaves or petals go, because that's true to nature. Or if you're making your own floral arrangement or bouquet, whatever you're doing. All right, so let's just keep going. I'm just gonna add a little bit of greenery, just coming in and out. Now, see, like on this one, I can do, just take, like, say, the forest moss and put some white into it and just kind of like this. I know people get on me for not showing, but, you know, the forest moss, take a little bit of the white and just kind of mix it together. Not completely mixed up, but, and so I can go like this, like that just all the way down here and it's not a one stroke kind of a thing it's just a mixture of paint 
And then if I want to, kind of like my little stems that I'm painting in here to show up better, just come down here as I go. And pull them in like that. See, just, just simple. And keep in mind when you're watching my videos, my intent is to create simple things that anybody can do. I don't want it to be difficult. Uh, that's not what I'm looking for. I want it to be something that you're not intimidated by and you think, oh, I can do that. That's the whole intent. Because I'm sure some people look at my videos and probably think, oh, that's so easy. Well, yeah, that's the intent. You know, can I do something more difficult? Sure I can. But that's not what I want to do. Right? So on this, I'm just kind of rotating colors and just pulling them to the stem. Some are longer, some are shorter. While you're painting, because of the way I paint, if my brush gets too full of paint, guess what? I just wipe it off and I go on. I'm just going to take this one out here. You can come over the sides. Like on some of these, I want them to be a little bit longer. I like when they're different sizes, when they're different lengths. And you can make them shorter. And if you're doing it and you feel like you need to go back over it, do it. Go back over it. Add some more. You know, it's okay. It's okay You know, to, to keep working on it. And just because you make one stroke doesn't mean you're done. Or doesn't mean you have to be done. Just keep working it. And like I said, my brush is getting pretty full of paint. And I do keep kind of rinse, wiping it off, but it's still full of paint. Alright, so there you go with that. Very simple, right? Yes, it is. Alright, so then I'm going to go back to my forest moss. Just kind of mix some colors up. And then I'm just going to do my little Now if I feel like they're too, oh, they're too transparent, then I just go back over them. Maybe pick another color to add to it, like the white, and it's good to go. The white's definitely a good color to put in with your colors because it is has more pigment to it. So that way it actually helps with the opaqueness of your paint, if that makes sense. I'm just trying to do light little pulls into these. If you want to get fancier with them, you can, because I kind of like to pull them out or kind of move my brush like that and do a wigglier. You know, you might even want to wait till you let it dry a little bit and then come back and add those in if you want to use those. And let's see, this one I'm going to do more of this kind. Again, just don't forget that you can always go back over it, add more color to it, even add another color to it. The pressure that you place on your brush will determine what the outcome of your stroke. I like this one. I can make some of them longer and pull them in here. If I want to do that, I'm going to overlap them. Hopefully I'm sticking on there. I'm sorry if I'm not trying to. All right, so then let's go back up here, finish this off. Again, I'm gonna do, I like these for whatever reason. And I'm just gonna keep pulling, pulling, pulling. I got 
some of that medium on here so it's a little thin. And come in here, go out this direction a little bit. Like that. I think that's pretty. I hope you do too. The last thing I'm going to do, and hopefully I got it all in here, the last thing I'm going to do is use my school bus yellow. And I'm just going to take the lid off of the bottle, stick my clay ball maker in here like that, and then I'm going to come in here and put some dots. And dots. Again, a very simplistic center. And that is intentional. I just want to put really little dots on here, not very big, and there you go. Again, very simple. Just imagine this sitting on a shelf, put some lights in it because I put lights in mine. Such a pretty ambiance piece or a night light or a light to sit in your bathroom when you have company. Have it on, they can find their way once they look at your bathroom. Very easy, very easy. All right, hope you like this video. If you do, make sure you give me a big thumbs up. New to my channel, please subscribe, hit that notification bell. And before you leave, I would appreciate it if you would share this on your social network with all your family and friends. Pretty easy, just hit that share button underneath the video and it will give you the options. And once again, thanks so much. I appreciate you and until the next time, you have a good one.